everyone. Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop, and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're going on a bit of a fall project, fall Halloween-ish. we got to get in there because we know what's coming. So I thought everybody's got panels, and sometimes they don't know what to do with it because maybe they like a, a, a certain square or they like a certain border, and they don't know how to make that border fit along that panel. So I thought, okay, well, I have this beautiful skeleton panel here, and I just got um, this black and this uh, orange as a scrappy bits. A, um, a felt of quilter was cleaning out some of her stuff, so just in the shop, so they're brand new, and I thought, oh, I'll just use them up on this. So this is what I'm doing. I love the ribbon, uh, and I thought, how can I border out this beautiful panel, this skelly, I'm calling him Shelly the Skelly. So Shelly the Skelly, border him up as much as I wanted to and, and accent him in a way to either make this as a throw, a wall hanging, uh, something that just hangs on the door at Halloween or behind the candy container as the kids are coming trick-or-treating or whatever, something like that. So what I did is I trimmed my panel so it was nice and square. I tried to optimize the amount because I have, think I have 43 by I think it's 22 and a half, something like that. And I'm making the border and the pieces fit. So there was a certain size. I was trying to go for a four and a half inch square for the ribbon here, which is uh, two triangles and then another triangle. And it forms this beautiful block right here. I actually haven't made any, but anyways, that right there. And, uh, and then you just make the same. They're all the same and they just flipped and flopped to make this lovely little ribbon sort of candy twirl down the side and across the top. So I measured it and then I realized, okay, well this is gonna give me about four inches more. I have about four inches more of this than I do of this. So why not put a little border to help alleviate for that distance, right? Easy way to compensate, okay? But if you had even just like a piano key, you could easily adjust that, right? You just chop, 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 and away you go. But you would want it to end up even. If you had, if you were doing half square triangles or stars or something like that, you wouldn't want to have cut off half a star. So border out your panel piece just a little bit more to compensate for the two sections. So, and you have to do both ways. It's the length as well as the width, okay? So I, I realized since this was, um, you know, the four, 42 or and a half or 43, whatever it was, and needed a little extra on the top, a little extra on the bottom, split the difference in between. And then when I put a bunch of these together, possibly five to six to cover across the top, how many was that gonna give me? How much did I have to add on either side? So I only needed to add about an inch and three quarters to the side. So I had to split that between two pieces. So you'll just see that this is a little bit narrower than this, but in the whole scheme of things, you're not even gonna notice. You're gonna notice that that ribbon goes all the way around nice and even, okay? So we're just gonna finish it off. We're gonna build out the other pieces, okay? So easy peasy, don't be scared. You can do it. So I think I need 17 more. And six for the top and uh, whatever, nine or 11 for the bottom. And, uh, and we're just putting them along like this. What I did is I took a five and one quarter square and cut it on the diagonal twice. Okay, so that would have been, I'll show you here so you know, one just like this, that made a, would have made one square. Same with the orange. When it comes to the black section, which is bigger, because it has to equal the both of the triangles, it was four and seven eighths cut a diagonal once, okay? So I said I'll need probably, you know, 20 pieces of this and 10 pieces of that, that sort of thing, because you'll need 20, 20, and 10 to, to make it all the nice, just saying numbers, just, um, you know, saying a number off the top of my head. I did cut far more than I needed, uh, but that's usually sometimes the way it goes when you're trying to figure out a pattern how to work for, how it to work for you. So I find it the easiest to keep uh, all your pattern pieces the same is to feed them in the same in the machine, don't flip and flop, don't all of a sudden going this way, because then you're not gonna have the right piece. You need to make sure it's this way, depending on which side you want your yellows to continue to be on and your oranges or whatever colors you're working with, okay? Uh, it does work best with three colors, okay? I can't really see it being uh, working any better with any other amount of colors. So three is what gives that little spiral. Okay. Like I said, just feeding them all in. Like I, said, I think I need 17 more, so we'll make up the 17 to finish off Skelly. Shelly, this guy. Oh, see? I almost did it wrong right there. It's the other way. Make sure the orange is on top or whatever color. You know, just make sure you're always doing them the same way, feeding them in the machine in the same manner. Okay. 
just trying to put the yellow on the bottom and then the orange on the top. And you could switch this around to be the orange the big piece and the yellow and the black being the small pieces. It's up to you. I just, that's what I chose. I didn't have a whole heck of a lot of the orange. I had more of the black. So I thought, if at least if anything, I at least get smaller triangles um, and we'll work that way. So, and I have just enough for this project. And I love the orange because it's got a play of yellow and oranges in it and a bunch of different oranges. So to me, it screams fall and Halloween. Very, very exciting. Though the temperature doesn't really feel like fall. <laughs> but it will be soon. Yeah. Us Canadians have Thanksgiving first. We have that in, uh, you know, just a couple of weekends. So that's Thanksgiving for us is October 8th, I think. I'm not 100%. But it's, uh, it's that weekend. We're very excited to have our turkey. We'll have to double check that we're, we have 17 in the pile before we proceed, because then we need to press them all, and then we'll add the blacks, and then we'll press them all again. Uh, the black has a little bit of a nice little flowery texture to it. It's quite pretty. It's got like a little, I'm not sure if it's tan or a really, really light mossy green, and almost like a little oh, orangey red to the little tiny berry. It's very faint though, but it's, um, I don't know, I think it just ties it all in together. A couple of blacks and Pop said he liked that one so I'm like ah, I like that one too that's why I picked it but sometimes you're a little stuck you're like and he said the the other black I had had a little bit more blue tint to it and I didn't really see it at first I was like oh sometimes you need somebody else's eyes to help with you help you with color I was like, where's that coming from? <laughs> we don't need that. All right, have some more extra oranges here, but I don't have any extra yellow. So let's make sure what I have on the chain gang here is 17. Okay. Two, two. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, oh, I think we have more than that, 10, and that was 10 and 11, right, 12, geez, I had to count, <laughs> 13, <laughs> 14, 15, 16, 17, okay, we made one extra, that's okay, all right, put that off to the side. Let's just make sure here. We can uh, count them as we're pressing. So let's press these open. Move uh, Skelly the Shelly over here. Or Shelly the Skelly. There we go. Put him there. And we'll just press these guys open. Or just press them anyways. You can press it to the, the darker color, which would to be is the orange. Okay. And then we add the black triangle to this nice straight edge right there. And if we did our job right, it should be a straight edge. Hopefully everybody's having a fantastic weekend. Countdown. There's not very many more till you know what. We'll work on something uh, Christmassy uh, next weekend. And we got a couple other little fall ideas. So we're excited about that. Don't forget to uh, join us tomorrow for the weekend project, which is uh, 3 p.m. Sunday Eastern. We uh, do a live stream and we're putting a new uh, um, scrappy quilt together. This will be the end of the rainbow uh, sort of collection of what I have. The next few is going to be Christmas, all Christmas themed fabric that I have. Uh, just doing regular patterns, but with the Christmas themed fabric, okay? So that's what we'll be working on. I'm very excited to be working on that because some of it's uh, kind of new to my collection. Um, I, ha I love it when people clean out because <laughs> if they don't want to move it, I get it. All right, okay, here we go. All right, now we get to add our black triangles, just like that. Just line them up. I found it easier just to kind of um, line up that little corner there and then wiggle to the straight and then just sew down. And we'll just beat them all in, all one right after the other. <clears throat> okay, 
And this one, I think it, it doesn't really matter. You could flip or flop whether you want to sew on the seam side or uh, the top side, it doesn't matter. Whatever's, whatever's good for you. Okay, we'll get all 17 of these done and then we'll give them a press. And then we're just gonna nip off those ears. And because that's a nice solid black too, if you didn't like that pattern on that side, you could easily flip that and have it so it was a solid instead of the little pattern. I think the little pattern helps play with all the other little ones that are going on here. Um, and uh, I think Skelly is solid enough. Shelly to Skelly, Skelly to Shelly, whatever. Mr. Bonies. Mr. I missed the buffet. <laughs> Look what happened. <laughs> so it happens when you don't when you miss the invite to the party. <laughs> and these play out. You can do this with many many colors. You could do this like in a rainbow ribbon. Just you know do you know couple with the oranges, couple with the reds, couple with you know whatever, and keep your other colors the consistent. Whoops, uh, whether it be black or gray or white or some other neutral tone to go with the the rainbows. Well, there's many options. Okay, just lining it up. And keep my hand out of the way. And this is what they call chain piecing. It's one right after the other, after the other, after the other. Um, you know, sometimes people would have these already stacked up uh, one on top of the other before feeding into the machine. Like I'm putting them together as I'm, as I'm going. You know, it's, it's, you know, whatever you want to do. If you only have a certain amount of time on the machine before the kids kick you off or, you know, you got to kick grandma off. <laughs> and set it all up ahead of time. Or if you doing like a sewing um, for a quilt guild or something like that, or you know, I don't know, charity stitch along, you could set them all up ahead of time and then just whip them through. And if you like this block so much, you could just do row after row after row after row of all colors. You could just do a row of red and a row of yellow and orange and pink and purple and, you know, that would be pretty too. Nice little rainbow like that. It almost, with the spiral, it would, it would look like, uh, you know, like ribbon candy and stuff, right? Or like, uh, or even the red, white, and green would make an awesome little spiral outside of a Christmas quilt for Christmas. Um, like the candy canes. It's a, I haven't, I've really used it before. I did it in the, um, or we did it as part of the Blazing Star Quilt from uh, Craftsy 2017 was their quilt kit. We've been doing it on our Patreon channel. So if you'd like to check that out, please do. Um, and we'll be giving it away to one of our patrons. And uh, yeah, so, and I really liked it. I'm like, oh, it looks far more complicated than it really is. So, and keep that in mind when you join us tomorrow for the live stream, it looks more complicated than it really is. Because <laughs> that's the last one and we're going out with a bang. So, <laughs> not the last of the year, you know what I mean, for the, for the rainbow collection, the ones I've had all, working from my buckets all year since late uh, 2017, uh, working on the, you know, scrappy adventure collection. So, but this one, this will be the last for that. And then we work on the Christmas stuff. I'm very excited for the Christmas stuff too. But I'm also excited for this one as well, because it's going to incorporate all the colors as well as gray and black and white. So, and I don't think we have done that yet to date. We've done mixes and plays on colors and, you know, never had a black or white in there. There's nothing but color and greens. You know, that was the French braid, you know, and then there's that beautiful one behind me, which is just blues and greens, you know. So, and that one is for my eldest sister, Lisa. And I just have to finish hand stitching the beautiful blue binding all the way around. It's nice blue flannel and it's be so soft for them to cuddle up against. So I can't wait to give it to her. Her and Larry, Lisa and Larry. 
I'm very excited to mail that off. I just gotta get cracking on the binding. <laughs> I think I had too many cuts of the black too. I hope so. I forgot to count as we were ironing. Hopefully somebody else did. <laughs> if not, we'll find out in the end <laughs> that I was one short or one extra. It's always that way, right? It's either one short or one extra. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Oops. Get under there. Okay, and the last for this one here. And pretty much after this, it's pretty much easy peasy of sewing them together. We do have to kind of square them up a bit. You want them to be approximately four and a half, best you can. Okay, so that's an extra. Let's double count. One, two, three, four. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So we just got seventeen? If not, well, we'll press them all. Because <laughs> you just never know. Okay, then now we're going to want to press to the black. Lift up that corner. Hold the other ones down and then just press. And you're going to do that with all 17 or 25 or 185, whatever you need for your project. <clears throat> and that's if you have a panel that you have to stay within the borders. Like uh, Skelly Shelly there needs to be within his border. If you had something like <clears throat> this beautiful animal print right here and you wanted to make a big border piece, or like a big panel piece from it, you would just cut the piece you wanted after you built your borders. Like you built your borders and you know you needed 44 and three quarters, then cut it at 44 and three quarters. That's all you have to do. And then that would fit no matter what, right? So if you had a nice big <clears throat> textured animal print or whatever, you can make that panel size whatever it is to fit. So um, you don't have to put a little, you know, border in between. You can just, you know, cut the panel piece the way you like it and make it fit. Okay. Options are yours. That's really cute fabric too. That just came the other day with the black and the orange. <laughs> like, hmm, what to make with that? <laughs> Almost there. And of course we will quilt this one up <clears throat> on a long arm Wednesday. It may be uh, closer to Halloween that it gets quilted up though, okay. So we'll save it for then. We're just trying to get a jump on the projects. Okay, so now all these, bring up my disco tray, and you just wanna kinda clip off these little tails. Okay, sometimes you get the tails going that way or you got them going all three directions. Just give a little press, spin the table. Just try and get those three off, okay? And we'll make a little collection. Well, I have no choice to make a collection, so. Okay, I know it's like, oh. The, the least fun part of, of quilt block making for me, I guess, is the squaring up. Does every, anybody have a, I don't mind the binding. The binding I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite happy to do because I know it's the end, you know, and it's the, not necessarily the happy, but you know what I mean. It's, it's nice to be able to get the job finished and, and be happy with the job. Usually you don't do it, uh, you don't put the binding on until you are happy, right, so. 
but it's just all this squaring up stuff, especially when you have like, you know, that's why I think, <clears throat> I don't think I'd do so well with a Bonnie Hunter quilt, because if I have to make 655 such and such as, I don't really want to square up 655 such and such as. <laughs> Can I cut just the squares and I'll be okay with that? <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm sure I will. I'll, I'll get there to that point where I'm going to want, I want to do something that complex looking that, um, and it takes up, you know, three months to do. All right. It's getting warm in here. Pop's got the cook lights on. It's the Easy Bake Oven! <laughs> it's Cook a Quilter! <laughs> He's not smiling. <laughs> okay, almost there. And all these little bits you can save for something, or you can just toss them out, or save them for some, you know, decoupage, collage you feel like doing with all your little odd bits. Mm -hmm. Just a couple more, and we'll be there. Either either way, whatever works for you. Twist the board, twist the fabric, you know, twist the ruler. You be your fabric wrapper. <laughs> we already come with our own confetti. <laughs> we got our own disco party. That one's split, so one more. <clears throat> and this one. Okay, other than that, they should be A-OK. -okay. Holy, who made this mess? Good gravies. Okay, now when we start putting these together, we butt up the oranges and then we angle the blacks. Butt up the oranges, angle the blacks. That's how I, I was trying to remember to do it, okay? So if you want them to be exactly like this size or it pretty much is what you can get it, obviously because of the, the pieces, this one went up that way, this one's gonna end up this way. Uh, I may change out some of these alternative corners to black and be able to applique maybe a little pumpkin or a bigger spider or a ghost or something on that instead of using the orange because <clears throat> I noticed that I think down there, we're gonna run into an orange square and an orange square, but that's okay. We figured it out. We had that. Okay, so if let's, we want our corner to be up here. Where's our orange? There's our oranges, okay. Be our orange up there. And then we want our ribbon to spin. Like I said, we can we can put it this way. You only have two choices. You got this way or this way to start off. So I think we'll start off with this way. And we'll butt the oranges. Oops, how'd you get in there? And angle the black. Okay, so we know we have uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 to add. So we know we've got our start right there. So let's add these two. So we know we have at least five of the orange squares together and one oddball, okay? But we won't say that out loud, it might feel bad. <laughs> Oddballs. Let's hear it for the oddballs. Okay. Cause it butt up the oranges. 
So it helps make that square. Okay, so that's one, two, three. I need four and five, and then one odd one off the side. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. And if I have to use a seam ripper, I'm okay. I got the t-shirt on. <laughs> It'll help save the day. Okay, now let's put those ones over here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And that, just to make sure, was gonna go that way. And then now we angle our buddies. We put them Oh, let's twist it so you can see it. Now we're putting them this way, okay? So it forms the whole black on the angle there. Or whatever color you're using. Okay, now we'll add the next one. Making sure you're still keeping that, that corner of the original one. You don't want to start adding things on in case it's the wrong side, okay? So again, budding, budding the fabrics up. Continuing to add to that ribbon for this beautiful border for Shelly the Skelly. Okay. Grabbing this end. There, and then we'll press after we add the last one on. Four, six. Oops. One, two, three, four. Oh, just gonna say, my math was not adding up. Okay, so make sure that was still the same. Yes here and then the odd one on the end. Okay. <clears throat> and then if I choose to bulk this out a little bit more, which I think I do, I have more of this fabric here that I could put a bigger border on the outside just to seal everybody it all together. Okay. And then for this last one here, we know we have to Butt it up, but it's gonna end with an orange instead, okay? And that's why I cut some blacks in case I wanted a back square in the bottom. Like I said, I could put a little ghost in there. I could put the name of the block and who, how, who made it and everything else. Okay, so there's our big ribbon that's gonna go down the long side of the skeleton here, okay? So let's give that a press. And we'll add the square to the top, the orange square to the top that we were gonna add. Okay. Make sure everybody's the way I wanted them originally. And there we go. So add that to the top and then we're gonna pin this onto this side right here. Okay. And then we'll add the bottom, okay. So I guess the key point really was, is if you're adding a chunk on the top and the bottom, make sure you're evening it out in the space needed to accommodate for your favorite square, favorite block, or whatever you wanna do to border out your quilt. Um, and then making sure you at least have another bit of the same color or a complementary color on either side of those panels. How you mean if you just need it on the two sides, then I'm sure it'll look fantastic, you know? But if you need it on then put it on all four sides, right? That's one way to do it. Okay, now since that we have that where we want it to go, we're gonna line this up here, that little intersection right there, because this is a four and a half inch square right here, because these end up being four and a half when done. Okay, flip and flop that seam to snuggle them and then put a pin in. I usually put a pin in that seam and then right at the top so it stays nice and straight as I'm coming off the quilt. I'm not getting the so angled cut or an angled sewing or anything like that. It's nice and even, that little nice corner there. And then come all the way down to the other side. And because we know this should be even at the bottom like this guy here, we pin it at the bottom. Nice and even, 
the nice little corners all lined up there and then kind of hold it out give a little shake and then try and pin the center approximately okay put a pin in there and then if you feel you want to put in an, one on either side of that center point then then do so it just helps stabilize everybody together okay All right, so now we're just gonna sew down this one seam to put the, the side of the bo uh, ribbon border on, okay? And then we'll press this, and then we'll work on the bottom part. You see, you could split the seam, flip the seam, flop the seam, whatever, whatever fits. Okay. And I had some greens and some purples picked out, and I thought, you know what, I'll save it for the folly colors, because he's folly no matter what. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and we'll do more Halloween-y colors. More of the green and the orange and the purple and the blacks and that sort of fun stuff on another project because we had we have this one and this one in the shop here and I had some leftover bits from a project I did with a customer so I figured well let's use those up because they're in the scrappy pile can't do anything else with them <laughs> actually we made the hobo tote bag out of those two colors so and she loves it yellow was for the summer and the orange was for the fall so <laughs> well, that's a good idea all right Make sure I got all the pins out. Okay, so there we go. Give that a little press. He's looking better already. And if you have to use some steam and persuasion, then do so. I mean, you could have trimmed maybe a little bit more, but there's like little tans and browns that kind of pull all into these sort of colors here. So I didn't want to take that off, but that's what I meant by he's already got his own border. That this panel has its own border to stay within. So if we can kind of give it that, stay within its section, you know, then that uh, makes it a whole lot easier and makes the panel that much prettier. So, okay, so now we get to do the bottom. All right, we get to plan this out. We don't need this anymore. Once again, someone made a mess. Okay. And now we get to plan these, like whether it's gonna be a black square or it's gonna be an orange square or what we got going on here. So first off, if we were to have this come this way. And here, it takes six of them. Okay, to do across the top part here. There and there. Okay, so that one can be orange. No, yeah, see, okay, we're doing those two bottoms black. No, I don't want that black. I don't want that black either. I guess they're going orange. <laughs> they kind of like little make little houses. Maybe that's what I'll turn them into. Turn them into a little Halloween house. There we go, put a little door and a window. See, problem solved. Not that there was a problem, just saying. If you came across one, or if you want, you can use one of these chunks instead. If you wanted to break up the color and not have anything that was the same touching, you know, it's totally, I kind of like the orange and I'm gonna make them into houses, so that's what we'll do. All right, so we're gonna add this onto this side and then just sew this whole little row together, okay? So let's put that there. I thought I was gonna, wasn't gonna like it, but then when I saw the, how they were looking, I'm like, yeah, we'll keep it that way. Because we can. Or if you had a little square that uh, was Halloween uh, themed or applique or whatever, um, you, could, you could put it in there, in that little corner.
I'm giving Pop a hard time because I'm allowed. Now I could have made these three and a half and made, you know, you had to make, you know, 20 of them or whatever. Um, and it may have just fit exactly, who, who knows, who knows. But I liked the four and a half size. I thought it was pretty. It was enough to bulk up around the panel a bit. And like I said, you could even add a couple more, add a plain border and then add another whole strip of ribbons. Like you can, the, the only limitation is your imagination. You could just keep going and going and going, you know? Make the next ribbon set, see how much you have to add for the, the little border piece of this, you know, this uh, orangey one in between and keep going. So I think you could really make a whole Halloween quilt at that point in time or some massive wall hanging. I really like the orange, I thought it was so pretty. And it was really good timing on her part because she came just the other day. <laughs> she actually came to pick up a quilt and brought me a bunch of stuff. I'm like, oh, well, uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, that works for me. <laughs> so I said, when they clear out, they want to move and they don't want to move at all. I got a bunch of books, a bunch, a bunch of books. So hopefully there'll be lots of new ideas for 2019. All right, so there's our panel all put together for the top part. Let's give that a little press before we start pinning it down, okay? And finish off Skelly Shelly. Oops, beat up the sewing machine while you're at it, or iron it while you're at it. Okay, there we go. Then we just line these two little intersections up right here and right here, pin them all. Do. I like pinning right where it needs to be because I think you get a nice, precise corner right in there and it looks really nice and attractive to the eye. It doesn't look off. It's not like it's shifted over, you know, by that much. It's kind of like, you know, it needs to be a little bit better. If you can, if you can. I mean, sometimes patterns are just gonna be a pain in the katushas, but you know, you gotta win. You, you be chief. All right, now sew that little line, okay. Yeah, I have another orange too that I probably, like I said, put another border on and I could bulk out another whole set of ribbons. I guess you have to wait for Long Arm Wednesday to figure out what I do. <laughs> I just may change my mind. Put a couple of haunted houses and then build out again and they may be in the upper corners of the other set if it happened to work out that way. You could put something different, you know, kind of make a little eye spicy. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, you wanna hold this nice and tight. Take that out. Oopsies, sorry guys. <laughs> the side camera, got a little, uh, a little bit of an issue there. Okay, there we go. We're just gonna give that a little press. And hopefully that helps encourage you to maybe take one of your very favorite blocks, like the ribbon or the star or the friendship or, you know, the 150,000 other blocks that are out there or even make up one of your own and uh, see what you can do with it. Okay, hold it up sideways so you can see it. Okay, so there we go. Isn't that cute? Love the colors, looks really pretty. And then like I said, you can add another bit of border on the side again to border it up. You know, make it a thick one, make it a thin one. And then I can do a whole other collage of orange and black, or I can even go the purple and green and, you know, and, you know, some other funky colors at that point in time, right? All right, so take care, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. And we will see you tomorrow on the live stream. Happy fall, y'all.